Uh, welcome to uh, yet another webinar from IMESH. I'm Anas, Product Marketing Manager at IMESH. So today our topic of discussion will be uh, about how to implement Istio, open source Istio service mesh in uh, Amazon uh, AWS EKS. So that will be the topic of discussion today. So for that, we have our uh, speaker, uh, Mr. Ravi, who is the CTO of uh, IMESH. So uh, Ravi has been uh, uh, has a decade of experience in building cloud native applications, and uh, he's also uh, uh, the um, uh, who, who's also been a chief solution architect for uh, for uh, for more than five years. So uh, before we be, before before we begin, um, uh, let me say that those who have joined from LinkedIn. Uh, it is better to register from the website also because uh, once the webinar is done, we'll be sending all the recordings uh, to your inbox. So uh, before we begin, uh, a brief about IMESH. So IMESH was formed in 2023 with the mission to secure and simplify the network of uh, microservices in the cloud. So we offer, uh, we help companies to uh, companies with their journey to Istio and Envoy. We provide enterprise Istio support. So our company is based in based out of uh, Dover, US, and we also have an office at Bangalore, India. So without further ado, uh, let me uh, invite Ravi, uh, and uh, let's begin the webinar. Over to you. Ravi. Thank you. Thank you, Anas. Yeah. Hello, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Today, we'll be going through the session of installing Istio in AWS and before that we'll be seeing like what is Istio, how it can help you. And after that, we'll see some multi-cluster, multi-cloud configuration as well. So without any further delay, let's dive into the discussion. So a little bit of a brief intro to Istio service mess. It's a open source software, which is mint or built for abstracting the network and security layer out of the application. So you need not to worry about the security and networking part once when you are developing an application or microservice application for your organization. All those hurdles for networking and configuration of the networking and security part will be taken care by Istio itself, everything. So Istio works, the default Istio works with injecting a sidecar to the existing uh, pod as a kind of side sidecar container to existing application. So how it works, you need not to change a single line of code to make Istio work and, or protect your application. Without changing any single line of code, we can deploy it to, or we can onboard your application to Istio service mesh and it can work easily without any problem. It adds a sidecar to each and every application. We can see here down, so service A and service B, if it is existing applications, it will add one more container here and one more container here. And both both those, those communication happens over MTLS or secure channel. Sim seamlessly, it, it can be integrated very easily. Furthermore, similar kind of configurations can be applied to any any configuration or means any microservice or or at any scale basically so let's go to the next point a high level istio features we can discuss here but this is not limited to that what istio provides so this is what we are seeing at the screen it is only the high level which it does so security feature it is having strong identity with the certificate which in which we can identify each and every microservice as an individual. So each and every microservice will have their own identity and to whom it is talking, we can control all those. All the data communication between the microservices even coming in and coming out and going out, all those are secure. So, and it is built on top of zero trust security, basically like you need not to trust anyone blindly. So all those things need to be handled at authentication authorization everything need to be handled at a very granular level that is provided by istio it's supposed even multi-tenancy like your if your organization is working on like uh, 
multiple teams are there they can access to a different different uh, applications there different different name name spaces without disturbing each other coming to the the next one it is network so traffic management at edge service to service egress ingress all those things can be controlled very easily at the very very granular level we can configure even timeouts retries failovers circuit breakers like all those network related thing it can automatically retry if if something is failing at any point of time even it can remove if any microservice is going unhealthy it will not send the request to that microservice for testing chaos engineering and all fault injection we can do very easily it, it can be handled and tested very like very it is it is very easy to do all those things it's it not only supports for kubernetes it can support even vms bare metals and all it can be configured so like if your application is already running in data center or any other vms it can we can make it work along with the istio and it can secure that as well now coming to the third point it is observability we can monitor each and every traffic and performance of each request which is entering into the cluster we can tune it accordingly like which microservice is getting how much request based on that we can either upscale downscale all those things can be done security logging auditing service dependency like which and which and all dependencies are there for a particular microservice all those things we can visualize and we can troubleshoot it very easily like at which point the the request is failing all those things can be visualized and configured in istio okay so so this is a bit of a multi cluster and multi cloud setup in istio we can configure this way we can have a, a primary cluster in eks or or vice versa anything is fine second cluster or third cluster in either eks gke anywhere we can keep it so this is kind of goal we will try to achieve today we'll have one primary cluster in eks aws eks and the sec secondary cluster or remote cluster it, it will be in azure azure and we'll try to make combine both together we'll deploy application in which we will be seeing the cross cluster communication happening from both the both the clusters okay so without any further delay let's go and see the demo okay so in the interest of time i have created all the configurations files beforehand so that we we don't spend spend much time on typing and all but i'll explain here what all the things are there so this is a primary eks we are making as a primary cluster so here we need to tell like this cluster will be managing other clusters as well so this is the flag for which it it tells istio that external istio d it, it this cluster is controlling other cluster as well if if it is getting installed and this flag is basically to get ex root access to a sidecar proxy for debugging and all but it is not recommended for production use case so this flag is usually not used in production network we are telling as it is in comp both application or both clusters will be on two different cloud so it will be they will be running on two different networks so for first network we are telling network 1 eks is having in network 1 and if you go to eks remote we can see it is having either network 3 or network 2 we can configure like vgke if you see we can have it network 2 so anything we like we can configure as many as we want so let's go ahead and deploy first our primary cluster and after that we'll be deploying application we'll be seeing first all the things are working after that we'll add another cluster and deploy application there as well and we see cl cross cluster communication so let me first deploy our first one so for that we need to okay so before going to that i have created two or i have three clusters but for this demo we will be seeing two cluster communication eks and aks we can add other one as well in a similar way but in the interest of time i'll be keeping it short 
so we'll be using two cluster for today so i have created two environment variables so we can context it easily so if we see echo we have eks which points to eks cluster and we have another one which is eks which is pointed to our eks cluster so let's deploy the first one in eks for that we need to write to ctl install hyphenates cluster eks primary and y and i'm giving context as eks so that it installs the application into eks cluster when joining another cluster to eks it is bit different than if you are making primary cluster as gke or ks is to installing in eks aws eks is little different i'll explain where to change and why that configuration need to be changed so let's wait for few seconds the installation will be done after that we'll install our east west gateway once the system in the cluster one primary cluster okay now let's go ahead and install our east west gateway so this is required to allow other cluster to communicate to this cluster if it is if you are making it only one standalone cluster you are installing into the single cluster this is not required but as we'll be seeing multi cluster scenario also today that's why we are doing this step so let's install that eks1 configuration will be seeing not to worry about that eks let it install in eks okay so meanwhile let's see the configuration eks so we can see here the network one we had selected we had configured to install this istio in network one so that's where it is pointing network one here we can see this this file is in in this case this is very specific to eks cluster here i have added a uh, service annotations telling that when this is guest gateway is getting created that time don't create a classic load balancer instead you create a network load balancer so by default if we create it without this line automatically aws or or when we are deploying aws will side it will create a classic load balancer what happens with classic load balancer it is uh, you cannot access it with a uh, specific ip what happens it changes the ip changes uh, over a period of time and when it is scaling scaling down it is not having very specific or it is not having static ip for that matter that's why i have modified it to use nlb which is having a static ip and that will be using it to to be accessed or to access this cluster primary cluster from the secondary cluster remote cluster if we don't have a static ip if the ip changes frequently we cannot point to a specific ip in that case we have a different setup that need to be done that we are not discussing today but in that case we need to have a dns setup certificates and all all those need to be done and usually that is done in production but for this demo we'll be using this way fine so we can see it is installed and now we need to expose our services in primary cluster so that other cluster can access it so for that we need to do cctl apply fnf and expose stod eks now we will be exposing our services as well
Okay, so our first cluster is ready with Istio. We can deploy application, we can test it with the communication and all it's happening. Later, we'll try to add another cluster and we'll try to deploy application there, then and there as well. So, okay, so let's check first if we have anything here. Kubectl, get NS. So these are the namespaces we have. Istio system is installed here, and we will be needing the IP of the Istvest gateway for the remote cluster. So to get that, what we can do, we can get service Istio system. Yeah. So one more thing is there in case of when we install Istio here and when the load balancer is created by AWS, that time we don't get IP, it, it gets the address and this address cannot be put into normal list. Like in normal configuration, we cannot put this address in our configuration, it gives error. We need a IP. And as I was mentioning, if it is having classic load balancer, if you try to ping, will you will get IP, but it changes frequently, like either upscale and down changes. But currently it is network load balancer, the IP will not change. We can ping it to get the IP and that IP will be using in our configuration to connect. Yes, so it is having this IP, we can use this one in our configuration for remote one. So I just change it here. And if you want to have a GK also, we can change it. We'll be using either one today. So let's use a case only. We'll have a demo for other, we can have an other day. Fine, so let's deploy our application. So for application, what we have, I have created an application which is having dashboard account and profile. So dashboard requests profile and account to get information from profile, it gets the name from account, it gets the amount in the account. So we we can check the communication between these three services if we try to curl the dashboard. So we'll deploy this and try to test it. So one configuration I'll open, so we can have a look. So it is it will be deployed under multi-cluster namespace. Okay, and if we see this dashboard, it is Istio, this flag need to be, basically a, a label need to be applied to a particular namespace so that once a deployment happen to that particular namespace, Istio injects a sidecar to the particular pod. If we don't apply this label, sidecar will not be injected and the proxy will not be there. So it will behave like a normal deployment. So let's go ahead and start deploying. Kubectl apply. So let me deploy a first service so that uh, cluster is. One minute why it's blocking. Okay. So account service I deployed. Let me deploy a deployment. Then we can deploy a profile and dashboard. This is done. Service also deployed. And then let's deploy our dashboard. Okay, and we can deploy a service, related service. To call this to dashboard, we need uh, another, we'll be deploying another container from which we can request to this dashboard service. So for that, I'll be deploying a sleep deployment. 
so okay so this is the way like we we can deploy it one by one or we can deploy all everything in this at the same time with kubectl if we have many files under a folder we can deploy directly that uh, folder so if i do this one all the things will be under this will be deployed so let's do that that way also we can see so we can see it is the whatever we have deployed earlier the, all those things are unchanged and new things the service and deployment is created for these two deployments okay this guy is not going up why fine not to worry so cube city get ports so that we can enter into the pod and start curling into multi cluster. Currently, we have not connected any multi cluster, but uh, I've created a multi cluster namespace, which we'll be using it. Like after connecting, also, we can test it. So, this is test sleep pod. We will be entering into that and try to curl. So, if you see here, one more thing to notice here, two of two. So it means one is your application, directly application, which we deployed. We can verify it here. In our deployments, we have only one, one container. We can verify it here. But if you see here, it is having two. It means that there is another container running inside the pod. That is a proxy, kube proxy, that we can verify as well. So what we can do, let's check that quickly. kubectl describe pod Stio. system oh, sorry multi cluster multi cluster yes so we can see here it should have two containers. So when we can see it is having containers, one is our banking application and second container is Istio proxy, which is injected by Istio. Fine. So let's get the pod ID again so that we can enter into it and start sending the call request. Qctl. Cluster. Sorry. Which now we are ready to curl. So send curl. So that our application name was dashboard and service name is dashboard. So we'll have dashboard. And it is having dashboard in point as well. So we'll use that. And it takes ID as a parameter so that it fetches the request like for which we are sending the request, the detail. So if you can see, we sent here dashboard with ID, we can change the ID, we'll get another data. So it is pulling a data from this pod, which is running a user profile and another pod, which is running our amount or, or the account related information and we can verify that we are having pod id here and we can see every time it is getting fished from those same pods we can verify the name and id so we can see here it is 2j at the end here c9 at the end let's verify that yes we can verify here as well so account is having c9 from this one we were getting the request and from profile, we were getting the profile related information. It's fine, perfect. Okay, so let's verify one more thing, which I was telling that Istio was injecting the, the, the sidecar. So for that, we can do one thing. One application was deployed in default namespace as well, and default namespace was not labeled for Istio. So for that, only one 
container should be there in that. We can check that. Get pods. Okay. Yes. Yes. So we can see here it is having only one because we had not labeled default name is for Istio. So that's why it is running only one container in it. Fine. Perfect. We have seen Istio is already in place and we are able to communicate with all the services which are onboarded to Istio. And even we can send a request from non non uh, istio enabled container to 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 the one which is running inside this uh, istio enabled part so that for that also what we can do let's log in into the container keep ctl For that, we as it is in different namespace, we need to add namespace also while sending the request. So we can send that one dash port dot namespace multi cluster dash port it is equal to it. 404, any spelling mistake? Yes. Yeah, perfect. We can see we are getting, still getting the request from the same parts. Okay, now we'll be trying to add another cluster. We'll deploy application there and we'll see cross cluster communication in action. So now it's time to install another cluster and connect with our primary cluster. For that, we need to configure our remote cluster. For remote cluster, we need to prepare, create a namespace. We need to prepare it for, uh, to mark it as a remote cluster. We need to do a few things. Like for a case, we need to mark, which is the network, either it can be two or three, we can see here, these two. Where is that name is this? Yes. Network two, network three, as whatever is there, we can have it. And we need to tell which is our primary cluster, who is controlling, who is going to control the remote cluster, that name we need to give. So in, in our case, it is our, the primary cluster is EKS, cluster EKS, the name of the cluster we need to give. That configuration need to be done. And after that, we deploy our Istio inside this namespace or so let's go ahead and deploy our AKS remote. For that, cube CTO, let's create in our AKS cluster. Sorry, it's the wrong one. Is the one. Okay, already exist. Just telling, let's verify. Give CTL get NS show labels. Okay, better delete and create if you it cause can cause problem to avoid that. Give CTL. Delete. System to be safer site. Just will delete and create again. Fine. Let's create that again. Fine. Now we are ready to install our Istio setup. For that, again, we'll do Istio CTL install an F cluster. We need to give this remote one. As we have seen, our remote one we have configured with the IP of Ist gateway of EKS. Here we put it, and with that configuration, we need to install. 
let's go ahead do it after this we have a very crucial step we need to give access to our remote api server or remote cluster api server to our primary cluster so that it can pass the certificates of the remote cluster and certificate which is issued by Istio that can be propagated to a remote cluster, which this is a very crucial step at this point of time. If you do it later, it, it won't work. If you do it early, it won't work. So this is the right time to do that one. But before that, we need to create API key for that so that remote cluster can be accessed by a primary cluster. For that, we need to fire a command after this step is Istio CTL X create remote secret. We need to give cluster name, which is cluster a case, and we can generate the file secret basically. And this need to be, sorry, this need to be run in a case, not the default one. Okay, so let me deploy it. Delete the existing one. The default one got created into our EKS cluster because by default, the default context is EKS. So let's go and delete it. Keep CTL, get secrets if you see. Yes, so we can see this this got created remote secret so we need to delete it it is not required here keeps it here delete secret This one got created, we can verify it by seeing the file the content. It will have something similar to this, okay? So we can see it is pointing to our cluster A case and this is the cluster endpoint, okay? So, and this need to be deployed to our primary cluster. So let's go ahead and deploy. A server a case into our EKS, which is primary cluster. So let's go ahead and deploy so that it gets access to the remote cluster API server. That is done. Now we can deploy our east west gateway to the second cluster, second our remote cluster. If someone needs to access our remote cluster, that can be done via that east west gateway. So let's go ahead and install that. Studio, CTL, same steps, whatever we followed. AKS, and this need to be done in our AKS server. Yes, go ahead. Fine, so it installed and we can expose our services which we want to be accessed by the other cluster. So similar way, which we did earlier, as STUD is not running in the remote cluster, only we need to expose our services. So for that, we can do kubectl apply expose services to our AKS. Fine, that is done. Now our cluster is set up with multi-cluster, multi-cloud. EKS is having primary cluster, AKS is having remote cluster, and we are ready to deploy another application or the, a few part of the first application into the second cluster and try to access it from the primary cluster. So I'll be deploying one part of the application, like it has three components, 
one component I'll deploy either profile or or the account one into the second one, and and we should be seeing the request or the re response coming from the another cluster as well, so that we can verify. So let's go ahead and deploy that. Give CTL apply F, demo application. So let's go ahead and deploy our profile one to our new cluster. Okay, it is done. Now let's go ahead and deploy our deployment to a case. Fine. Now we are ready to test it cross cluster communication. So we can see and we can verify even verify that this whichever deployment we did into the remote cluster that also need to have a proxy container in it. That also we can verify it quickly. kubectl, get pods, same multi cluster into our a case. We can see here profile it is having two two of two, and we can see only it is having profile which we deployed. Other two applic two microservices we didn't deploy it here. Please mark note it that. ID of this one. We'll be seeing a response from this pod as well. So let's go ahead and try to enter into one of the sleep pod. Kubectl get pods multi cluster. I guess. Okay, again, let's enter into this. CTL exec. Multi cluster and we have to run it. SH come on to get the terminal. Now let's call dashboard dashboard id suppose four so note this one id here it should be changing okay Fine. So we can see it here as only profile when we deployed in another cluster, those are coming one from the same cluster and another from the another cluster. So cross cross cluster communication also we see here. For MTLS L4 L7 configurations, we have already done that demo. You can go and refer to our YouTube channel for more information. If you have any question at any point of time, you can contact us. So that those things uh, I'll be not covering for today's session as we have already covered. If if it is required, we can cover it in the future one, but to, to make it short today's session, we are not covering that area. So what we did, cluster one, we deployed Istio, main Istio, and we made cluster two as a remote cluster. Here we deployed a gateway, which when we installed the gateway into the into the cluster two, that, that request was going through the gateway. And that's where we had IP of this and we had added that while installation to second one. This is the kind of setup at the end we saw. We had service one here, we had service two here. So when we were sending a request to this, it went to gateway two and got the res uh, response from this guy. Like it's, it sends the request here. And if this guy has to send some request, it can need to go to gateway one and send this to here from that. So. This is a setup MTLS, like all those configurations are already encrypted, secured. We are not covering that here in the interest of time, but that part we have already covered in our previous, like last session that you can refer. Okay, thank you. That's all for today's session. If you have 
any question at any point of time, please feel free to contact us. Contact at as my Thank you. Anas, over to you. Okay. Um, thank you very much, Ravi. Thank you for a wonderful session. Uh, I hope it was um, helpful for all the attendees. So uh, if you have any questions, this is the time you can unmute yourself and ask. I think Ravi can take one or two questions and uh, or otherwise you can uh, drop that in the chat as well. So uh, so um, for those who have attended, if you would like to get a reply of uh, today's session, feel free to fill in that, uh, fill in your details in that link that I've shared in the chat. Um, so if we do not have any more questions, uh, let me uh, give you two lines about what we offer at IMESH. And uh, so what uh, we at IMESH offer is Istio Enterprise Support. Uh, we help enterprises to uh, deploy Istio into production. And we do all, all uh, sorts of Istio lifecycle management, uh, optimization, uh, and more. So um, we also offer a free pilot also. So if you are interested in uh, knowing more about or explore all those areas, you can contact us at contact at the imh.ai. So if there are no more questions, I think we can wrap this up. Uh, thank you everyone for attending. Have a lovely uh, weekend. Bye-bye.